I don't understand how you can take what was male genitalia and in an, in an hour and a half, I left with a completely natural looking vagina and can still have a great time. You know what I mean? That's so crazy that that works that way. Wow. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I am doing a long awaited SRS Q and A. For those of you who don't know, SRS stands for sexual reassignment surgery, which is when they take what is considered to be male genitalia and make it into what is considered to be female genitalia. I had this procedure about a year and a half ago and I am fully healed. I wanted to keep myself kind of under wraps. I didn't want to talk about it too much just so that I could fully recover, fully settle into myself. And now that it's a year and a half later, I think it's ready to dive right in. So I asked you guys on Instagram and Tumblr, which I will link in the description down below to ask me some questions that you were curious about for SRS and here are the questions. Before I dive in, I wanna let you know that surgery will be different for every single person. Every vagina looks different, whether they're cis or transgender, every vagina looks different and everybody will behave differently. Sexuality is fluid and it's a spectrum. Not everyone's gonna have the same results and that is okay. P.S. It's so hot in my room right now, so if I'm sweating a lot, that's why. So deal with it, I guess. So the way that I'm gonna structure this video is I'm going to have the more health-related aesthetic questions first, and then afterwards I'm gonna have the more sexual naughty questions, okay? So stay tuned for that, and let's dive in. So the first question is, how long did it take until you felt fully recovered? It took about three to six months for me to feel totally ready again. My doctor told me to wait three months at least before having any kind of sexual contact or sexual activity. But I would say until you are able to like go out and do stuff again and feel pretty normal, I would say about three to six months is when you're good. Three months is when you're able to go out, kind of lightly dance and stuff, because this is not a joke, people. This surgery is no joke. I was battered in for so long. Um, so plan out about three months until you are fully recovered. The most popular question by far is, of course, how does it look? Um, it looks great. Um, <laughs> as someone that is bisexual, I have been with both men and women. Um, and of course I have friends that wanted to compare and whatever. I love my results. I think I look perfectly natural. My boyfriend also thinks I look perfectly natural. Um, I'm very comfortable during sex and it looks just like any other vagina. You know, every vagina is different, so no one's gonna look exactly the same as anybody else, and that's okay. Um, I, you know, I look pretty much the way you do. <laughs> so question number three is how did you afford it? I am lucky enough to have parents that love and support me very much and have helped to guide me through my transition. I understand that everybody has that privilege. This surgery cost about 20 grand, um, give or take, depending on, you know, hospital stays and medication, travel, things like that but overall it cost about $20,000. Insurance took about a year and a half to reimburse us at all for that. So before you go in, it's important that you know, A, most of the time you're going to have to go in and pay out of pocket and wait for reimbursement if you're going to pay. Other countries are totally different, so I would absolutely look up what your state and what your country's laws are regarding insurance and sexual reassignment surgery. But for me, I got mostly reimbursed after about a year. Question number four is, what was the first day after surgery like being able to live in the body that you felt closest to? Um, to be honest, the first day after surgery, I was so fucked up on morphine that I don't really remember. Um, I do remember waking up from surgery and feeling like a weight was lifted off my chest. Um, it's a feeling that I, I really can't describe, especially if you're not transgender, um, but it, once I was able to see things, which was um, about a week or a couple days after surgery, I got to take all the bandages off and stuff and I actually got to see it. Of course, it was very swollen and looks nothing like it does now, but the relief that I felt was honestly indescribable. The first day after surgery, I was almost completely bedridden. I hardly remember it at all because I had a morphine drip and I believe I had to like walk around the hospital with like a walker because I just couldn't walk. So the first day was definitely a lot. I would say the first three days are really a lot on you physically and mentally because you're recovering and you can't move, you can't 
do anything. But once I was able to settle into it and kind of understand and get used to my vagina, the first time I got to look at myself completely naked in the mirror, um, I cried because it just like, the way that I describe being trans to people is that like, it's literally like Freaky Friday, at least in my scenario. <gasps> look at me. I'm cold. Oh, I'm like the crypt keeper. Okay, that's enough. Ah! Like I would wake up every day knowing that I was a female, my whole life knowing that I was a female and looking in the mirror and seeing not that. And it's that disconnect has a lot of implications in your day-to-day -day life. Like dysphoria has been cooked into everything in my life and it still is. But this surgery helped me in ways that I never even thought possible. This leads me right into the next question, which was, was it the best decision of your life and was it completely worth it? Um, it definitely was. There is no way that I can even imagine myself not having this surgery now. It was worth every second of pain, every dollar, every doctor visit, every moment of uncertainty. It was worth every second of it. You know, the surgery isn't for everybody. It's a very invasive surgery and it's gonna change your life forever should you decide to go through with it. But I could e never even imagine living my life without it at this point because I have always felt this way, you know? Next question is, is there scarring? And if so, how bad is the scarring? Like I said, everybody is going to be totally different. Um, what they do basically for the vaginoplasty, which is the procedure that I had, there are a lot of different ways to go about creating a um, neo-vagina as they're called when they're really just vaginas. Um, but the procedure that I had resulted in having two kind of V-shaped scars along the sides of the labia. I um, went to a great doctor who I'll get to in a moment. Um, and she put it between the labia minora and the labia majora. So basically it's completely hidden in the folds of my labias. Um, and I hardly see them. If you are someone who scars easily, if you're someone that keloids a lot, I would prepare for scarring. Um, like I said, I hardly have any, but I would have taken huge keloid scars over having a penis any day. The next question I have is who did your procedure and where? I went to the Papillon Center run by Dr. Christine McGinn. You may have heard about her. She was on Oprah. You could go on YouTube and just look up Dr. Christine McGinn. You'll find a lot of interviews. Um, she is one of the world's top doctors for this procedure and I could not have asked for a better surgeon. I call her the pussy witch because I don't understand how you can take what was male genitalia and in an, in an hour and a half, I left with a completely natural looking vagina and can still have a great time. You know what I mean? That's so crazy that that works that way, wow. So yeah, I was Dr. Christine McGinn in New Hope, Pennsylvania, which is super nice to me because I am also on the East Coast. So I didn't have to fly all the way to California or to Thailand or anything like that. Dr. McGinn was actually trained by Dr. Bowers, I believe, Dr. Farsi Bowers, who is um, known to be one of the top doctors in the United States for these procedures. And I would go as far as to say Dr. McGinn is better because I have seen both their results and I chose McGinn as my first choice. Not to mention Dr. McGinn is a trans woman herself. So she really understands how to communicate with us, deal with dysphoria. And it's really inspiring to see somebody representing the trans community in the medical field. I know there are plenty of trans doctors, but I've never met them. So it was honestly um, really eye-opening and really inspiring just to meet someone like her. My next question is how much did it hurt? Um, it definitely wasn't comfortable. Like I said, I was on morphine for a while. They prescribed me things like Vicodin and Tylenol Extra Strength, but I'm not really someone that likes to take pills. I did take the Tylenol for sure, um, but I kind of just dealt with it because I took so much time off work. I was bedridden for a lot of the time. I would say for the first month or so, I was getting these like shocks because nerves are reconnecting. So as they reconnect, it feels like electricity is just being like shot up through your vagina. Like it's not, that sounds pretty pleasant actually, but um, it wasn't fun in that way. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. Um, so on a scale of one to 10, um, I would say it was a, I was at like a constant like three or four for a while, probably about a three. And then it would spike with those like nerves reconnecting and stuff to like a nine, <laughs> um, sometimes, sometimes a 10, but like, for the most part, it was pretty, it was pretty reasonable. The biggest 
struggle with getting bottom surgery is the recovery. Um, and not just the pain, but the dilation, the waiting, returning to work, things like that. It's a lot on you mentally and physically. So just be aware of that. The pain is the least problem. Next question is, does wearing clothes and skirts and leggings feel different now? Absolutely. That is one of the best things in addition to looking down naked and not seeing a penis and having comfortable sex. Um, that is one of the best parts of this procedure is that I can just go to the bathroom like a normal fucking person. I can just go, I can go to the bathroom, pull my panties down, pee, pull them back up and go. I don't have to worry about talking. I don't have to worry about going to the beach and being afraid to swim because my tape might come undone. Um, I used to wear, and I still do, I wear leggings all the time, but I would wear them to be comfortable. And they weren't comfortable because I was always tucked. So I wear leggings and stuff now and I wear short shorts, whatever, and I have no issues. And it's amazing. It's just so much more comfortable. I was physically uncomfortable every day. Cause imagine if you are not trans, if you are watching this and you don't know what talking is and stuff, imagine you take your genitals, or if you're a woman, um, if you're a fine female at birth, maybe binding your chest, but compressing your genitals so tight every single day is so tiring. <laughs> So yes, um, wearing clothes is a lot different and it's a lot better. I can guarantee that is one of the best parts. The last question I have on the more medical side is was there anything you weren't expecting in your recovery? Um, honestly, yeah. I, this is kind of weird to say, but like it took me some time to get used to my scent being different. Like my natural scent changed. Um, not just like underarms or whatever, but kind of that too. More so like it smells different. <laughs> like it it smells like a vagina because it is a vagina. Um, so it, like I said, it just smells different. Um, and it took me some time to kind of get used to that. I don't think we realize how much we rely on things like scent to um, check in on our health and our safety. But yeah, it took me some time to get used to it. And I like it now, I guess. <laughs> God. But yeah, so scent was probably the biggest surprise for my recovery because I've watched all these different videos. I've watched people talk about, you know, complications, revision surgeries, bleeding, which I've never really had any issues with. Although I will have a story time for when I bled on somebody once. That's coming in a whole other video. So lastly, I have two kind of more sexual questions to answer and that will wrap up this video. If you are underage, if you are watching this for any purpose other than educational, please click off this video. This is for transgender women. I am not trying to attract the chasers over here. And if you are for my real life, you're welcome to keep watching if you're curious. Um, but I will be talking about sex and my vagina and orgasm. So just be aware. So is sex better, worse, or just different? I would say it's both better and it's different. Um, for me, I hated anal sex. I was uncomfortable. I was reminded every time that I wasn't like every other girl. Um, so dysphoria was going to always be a part of sex for me at that point. And after waiting the three months and recovering and everything, uh, my boyfriend and I were able to engage in sexual intercourse. And it was unlike something I'd ever experienced. I actually cried <laughs> out of just happiness and relief the first time that I had sex post-op because I never knew that sex for me had never involved my genitals, period. I had so much dysphoria that like even masturbation would cause me dysphoria. So when I was having sex, if someone even was okay with it and wanted to touch my genitals, I was not okay with it. And I would just kind of like bat their hand away. And I was so physically and mentally uncomfortable all the time that like, I don't even remember what it's like anymore. Like I totally blocked it out. I don't even remember what it's like to have sex pre-op anymore. Back door is now closed without special ask for entry. Um, yeah, so sex is great. If you are assigned female at birth, if you're someone that has a vagina, um, I would say it probably feels the exact same as it feels to you. <laughs> to basically give you a quick lay down of how things work. They move the prostate, which is the male G-spot, which is located around the anus, like deep in there. They move it up top where the natural female's G-spot would be. So when I'm having sex or if you're, you know, going up and kind of doing the come hither motion, it's rubbing on your G-spot. 
and they relocate the nerves from the tip of the penis into the clitoris so it's all that same sensation also for those of you who don't know we all start out as female in the womb and then depending on how much testosterone permeates the embryo we develop things like gonads and a penis and things like that which is why males have nipples so reversing that actually isn't all that difficult and that's why it looks and feels so natural all right you guys my last question for the day is can you climax can you orgasm can you come the answer to that is absolutely yes i can yes i can um it's different from before for sure the way i heard it described one time was that a male orgasm feels like your your dick is the sun and just rays are going out through your whole body a female orgasm feels like you are the sun your body is the sun and the rays are just everywhere around you um it feels different and it feels better i would say it definitely took me um a couple months to be able to because everything was still reconnecting the plumbing was still figuring itself out i think it took me like probably two months two or three months to be able to and let me tell you two or three months without coming is a long time that's a really long time to not be coming um and, and it was very frustrating i was surprised at how tough it was to be honest but i did it um and if I did it, you certainly can too. So yeah, things like orgasm are totally case dependent. Not everybody can, but I would say about 90 to 95% of women that got bottom surgery are able to achieve orgasm. Um, it's definitely mental over physical, especially as a female. Um, so it's, there's a learning curve. There's definitely a learning curve. But in time, I can just about guarantee if you were sexually active before surgery, you will be able to be healthfully sexually active post-op all right you guys i have so many more questions that i could answer but i'm just going to stop there i could make a part two to this video i promise that coming up soon within the next month i will be recording a full-scale srs story where i have photos and vlogs of my surgery and my recovery and i can't wait to share all of that with you so please stay tuned for that if i have already posted it and you were watching this video in the future i will link that right down in the description box below if you guys have any more questions for me or any video requests, please make sure to comment down below and let me know what you think. If you liked this video and it helped you, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It helps out my channel so much. Send it to whoever you think can benefit from it. And please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever I make a new video, which coming up will be every Wednesday. That's the second announcement. I will be making a new video every Wednesday. I'm holding myself to a schedule and you can expect to see me coming up next Wednesday. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for sending me your questions. I love you all so much. Make sure you follow all of my social media in the description box below. And until I see you guys next time, good luck. I love you. Bye.